Hey everyone, welcome back to Play Casket with your host, Parochial Guest, Goblin. Wait, are we doing just a your turn? Oh yeah, we are doing a your turn, but <laughs> I, have, I have a habit of doing that, though. We're doing, we're doing crazy stuff. Anyway. Back to your doing, turn. Yeah, back to your turn. Um, we're actually going to, like, review the Nintendo Direct that my video lately uploaded <laughs> afterwards. And TGS. Thank so you, many things Kevin. Happened. Yeah, so many things so, happened this week today. Or to date. Yeah. Yeah. So we're basically going to recap and kind of just give our thoughts on Tokyo Game Show and the Nintendo Direct. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you go ahead and get at it with the Tokyo Game Show and kind of cover up some of the ideas and stuff like that. Oh, man. Um, so many things that got announced. Uh, I'm re- I was surprised to see so many uh, original IPs. I think the one thing that really stood out was Sinduality. Sinduality. Um... Basically, you control a mech, and you just explore a world, and you kill shit. I, I, I'm getting a Lost Planet vibe from it. And then oh, you, you go get around like, and killing shit. Yeah, and then you get a waifu AI. It looks, like, looks cool. Plus. <laughs> it looks really cool, though. You move so. over there, press A. Kill shit. A+. plus. <laughs> Solid gameplay. Five stars. Yeah. We'll, put, we'll, we'll press A again. Has mecha, has waifu, everything you need. Yeah, no, the... Not much, not much kind of bled into my area because I was I was busy with a lot of other weird little things during the T- Tokyo Game Show. I almost completely forgot it happened, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that um, the uh, situations that we had was um, you know like it, there was games that did finally come bleeding through. And one of the ideas that I ended up uh, seeing was the Suikoden remasters. Or remakes, whatever, however you do. I was kind of excited about that. How many do they lie. have? Like eight? Um, I think they have like eight games, but they're gonna do like the first two. Uh huh. Um, remastered and do like a remaster remake. I'm I'm hearing either or. I don't I don't know all the details yet. Okay. But Konami is also like I'm excited about that because I didn't really get to play many Suikoden's, and those games are like. Those are like holy grail games to try oh, okay. to find right now. Like they are hard to find. Like they're like easy hundred plus bucks, like easy. And so I always heard about them. I just never really played one. So it gives me a chance to play them. And apparently, Konami went on record that they would like to do more new ones, not just remakes, just new ones. So. I'm all for Konami going back to its roots. How about you guys? Like, legitimately, that's kind of cool. They're even doing the Raymond, uh, not Raymond, uh, Bomberman game. You know, Bomberman R2. So oh, okay. They, I was about to be, like, cocky. I'm like, where's my new Bomberman? Oh, wait, never mind. They, they are doing that. <laughs> Scratch that. Scratch that. Where's our Ninja Gaiden game now? All right, that's Koei Tecmo. <laughs> Still gonna well, ask I, about I that, think, though. Uh, dang it. I, I, I think they made one. Um, I'll have to look up I'll have to look it up again, but um, it was it was I think it was done by Team Ninja. I'll have to look it up again. Okay. But <laughs> well, we do we do remember hearing that little rumor that Team Ninja was working on Ninja Gaiden Four. It may be still true. It was just an early kind of adaptation of it, mm-hmm. and that's just all we have. Let's hope so. But that 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 kind of leaked out to me. Another one kind of uh, popped up was an interesting new title that was that looks kind of like a weird. RPG, but Samurai Maiden. Mm-hmm. It looks like Harem Samurai RPG. <laughs> a plus. Well, I'm getting a Senran Kagura vibe from it, so I might pick it. I might pick it Speaking up. Speaking of which, I still have not picked up the Senran Kagura Neptunia game. Get it when you can. I know. I need to find it whenever, like when I need, when I can. Like it's gonna be harder and harder to find. So you know. And it's probably buy two of them so I can sell one for like 300 bucks in two months. Damn you, Sony. Right. right. So, yeah. There's that. Is there any other things you want to kind of highlight on the Tokyo Game Show? Um, They showed a little bit more of Exoprimal, or at least the story trailer. Right. Um, it, it looks stupid fun, but it, I think it has PvP in it, so I'm a little iffy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want other people... Gross. Well, because, like, it just becomes, like, a PvP game with, like, annoying little things you gotta deal with then. Oh, yeah. A PvP so, game with, yeah. Because yeah. you could just ignore the dinosaurs because the other player is more of a threat. Stuff like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I could see that happening. <laughs> you know, there was... 
I, I there, there was a really cool idea I, I remember talking about quite a bit that people would be able to like run a mech or a giant golem and the PvP is like you you compete your golem against somebody else's like crew mm-hmm. and then they got kind of uh, like you fight each other and you kind of like sling back and forth upon each other and climb up on their golems or mechs or whatever. It was a really cool idea. I'm surprised nobody's done it yet. <laughs> But, yeah. And then another one is uh, Valkyrie Elysium. They also dropped the um, demo for it, too. So it's out now. Go and play it. Or not, and just buy it blindly. (laughs) Well, it's basically not Valkyrie Profile. Just give us another Valkyrie Profile, or at least remaster them. I can see... uh, Okay, I can see Square eventually doing that. Mm -hmm. I can. Uh, I don't know, though. So They had a mobile game. I wonder if it's still up. I have, to, I have to look that up too. <laughs> yeah. Um. But, like, I don't know. I think uh, Square should start porting some of their older games, like not just remaking them, remastering them mm-hmm. if they need to and stuff, and just porting a bunch of them. Yeah. Like, honestly, I could see so many people just paint. Buy- Dude, I bought I bought the um, Secret of Mana series collection at like sixty bucks, and yet it's twenty bucks now. Oh, okay. You know? Like, let's be real here. So. <laughs> but, uh, anything else you want to add to that one at all? Uh, The Awakener. They showed a little bit more of the uh, finalized, I guess the alpha version. Um, it's, it's basically Dark Souls, but Devil May Cry. Uh, but I think you can swap between your characters or something like that. But oh, it looks yeah? really cool. Um, what else? Star Ocean also got announced. Which is pretty cool. Or at least they showed a bit more of it. Um, Star Ocean is kind of like in a rough area because the Tales of series just like does it way better. Star Ocean kind of struggles. It's basically Star Ocean for me, like as far as what I've always seen, I always felt like a um, Tales of Space. Uh huh. Yeah. That's basically what what it feels like to me. <laughs> um. But they just don't like they they try to do something different with it and uh-huh. it just doesn't it doesn't roll off. Like, yeah. For some reason it just doesn't set off. And but when you also consider that, um Tales of Games kind of struggle with that too. Mm-hmm. Like they had a kind of a good good um identity for a little while. And but these recent ones just seem like darker atelier games. Yeah, <laughs> like that's like the same, like they hire the same artists or something like that, and they just look like darker atelier games. I'm like, okay, I mean, they do recycle the, assets and so like what, what happened? Like, what happened to a lot of their like short, semi stocky character designs? Mm-hmm. Like, what happened to that? They're like, well, we got more power, so we can make them long, tall, and anime as fuck. Yeah, I'm like, but that's atelier's job. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what's going on with that, but yeah, it just looks. It's just, I don't. It doesn't resonate with me. Yeah. Like the later ones do not resonate with me. Um, I probably pick rather, it up on sale. I'd but rather yeah. see Tales of a Biscuit ported uh-huh. than a one of the newer ones. So. Okay. Maybe we get a uh, go find the 3DS version or something. I do have the 3DS version. You play the 3DS version then? Yeah, it's actually right there. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I hoard my heat, <laughs> but um. Anything other? Any good other good highlights on that? No, I guess we should switch to uh, my turn. Nintendo's <laughs> Nintendo Direct review. So there's been there was a there's a little joke and a couple of jabs going on on our previous video. We were so busy and so many huge things were going on that uh, my dumbass forgot to schedule the video properly. <laughs> so. Our video came out, us predicting <laughs> Nintendo Direct stuff, the day after Nintendo Direct stuff. <laughs> well, did they like, not announce anything in Wizards? <laughs> okay, how accurate were we? Um, kind of accurate. Okay. Uh, Legend of Zelda got its own name, and it's releasing in May. Okay. So, we were wrong about the, like, you know... Delay, like the delay and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Um, which I don't know. I feel like kind of bittersweet about that, but I also think like the Switch is going to be around for like ten years. Yeah. 
so I'm not too hurt by that. I'm predicting 16. No, I... I think the popularity will keep it moving. Okay. But I think I think Nintendo will call it quits roughly about eight years in mm -hmm. and start working on the new system. So they'll have a couple other things that are going to get ported. I hope to God it's backwards compatible. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that'd be great. But I can see them doing a couple major ports and stuff like that and such okay. from the Switch onto it. Like, Ultimate's probably going to get another port. It's going to be like Ultimate X or something like that. And it'll be... All the characters, plus maybe five other characters. And they're probably not. Gonna, they're probably going to have some kind of like one, one like uh, fighters pass, and that's it. Okay. Like it's going to be quick. That way, Sakurai can be focused on something else, and they're going to try to make their money back from Ultimate. Because I still think, even with the massive sales of Ultimate, I think Nintendo put a lot of money to a point where I don't think they're actually making money off of it yet. Mm -hmm. But. I know that's probably... Dude, it sells to this day. So, yeah. So, like, I'm not worried about Nintendo eventually making money off of it. I could probably say Crowley will turn profit this holiday season. Okay. Like, pure profit. You know? Um, so, I could see that all happening. And... But not, not for a while. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So, I could see the HD ports of stuff happening later. Or the ports of the coat like the uh, player's choice stuff happening later oh, okay um, yeah but uh we Nintendo were, correct Nintendo yeah correct. <laughs> we were going back we were we were kind of right on the fire emblem fire emblem was coming but we were talking about the fact that it's very obvious uh -huh. like it's literally intelligent system just recently released paper mario they're not doing an advanced wars game because that's still being remade and delayed because reasons i guess mm -hmm. So the only options they have is make more codename Steam, which apparently they hate me, a new IP, or more Fire Emblem. Yeah. Let's be real here. We all know it's going to be Fire Emblem. I'm sure as shit, it's Fire Emblem. It's Fire Emblem Heroes, but not really. But it is. <laughs> you basically play a character that looks like... He was watching a VTube while playing uh, Switch and was like, I'm going to make my character hair look like that. And decided <laughs> yeah, it looks it... so bad. Why did they, why did they choose a red blue anyway? It looks kind of oh, terrible. It's I think. Switch. It's a Switch haircut. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, it's a Switch. Shantae did that. <laughs> did they? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Shantae has that color. In fact, Paladins has an exclusive skin if you play it on Switch that has that same color palette. Like, I've seen it so many times to promote a Switch version of a game. It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> like, I'm seeing this. Don't act like I don't see this. But, yeah, it's basically Fire Emblem Heroes. Okay. I almost feel like there's going to be, like, pseudo Xenoblade 2-like gotcha mechanics in it. Yeah. I could uh. almost guarantee it. Almost. You know, I don't think it's going to be as bad as Xenoblade 2. Mm -hmm. But I could see it being like Xenoblade 2. Like, there's going to be, like flavor to that like wait hold on a moment i don't think that's right fam this character generation yep to keep the gameplay and the most going. and the most exciting thing that can't that got announced in that series uh -huh. so the most even even greater than pikmin 4 yes that was announced too but this was more important we got not one not two not three not four not five not six but seven seven soon to be released farming life simulators announced and two on the way what? <laughs> yeah, we got Rune Factory, Harvestella, Wonderful Life. Um, what was it the uh, the? It's not it's not Harvest Moon sixty four. It's mm -hmm. basically Harvest Moon sixty four with uh, Story of Seasons. Okay. Story of Seasons, a Wonderful Life. We have um, Fey World. Um, we have Harvest Moon sixty four apparently coming out too. Um, we have uh, Dreamlight Valley. And something else like it, there was i am ready to farm bro i am ready to farm <laughs> but yes back going all the way back there was uh they, they were talking about the new updates to pikmin bloom and kind of teased pikmin 4 finally okay so i'm kind of excited but the thing that really got me surprised was namco actually cares and, and, and we talked about this before i think namco's digging in their back pocket in their backlog to see what games people want because they're probably seeing the writing on the wall. They can't churn out Dark Souls all the time. Yeah. 
they know that, right? So they need another they need another IP. I think that's why they did the Pac-Man World. It's why they did the um, like little nightmares ports all over the place. Um, they brought up a couple older games, if I remember right. Oh, I have to look it up. But they just announced a um, Tales of Symphonia remastered. Oh yeah. So. But isn't it just their PS2 port? It's the PS2 version of that port, so Ugh. it runs it runs grosser. <laughs> um, but still, you know, it makes it makes me wonder. Like th- th- this, this kind of proves the point that they they're trying to find out what else works because obviously this tells me that people want their classic Tales of games more often because mm-hmm. they did do a port of uh, Tales into not Tales into Reverie but Tales into something like they they already one did of the one Tales series yeah another Tales game already and then now they could just do abyss and call it good like with the solid three right there okay um they're already talking about porting tales of symphonia 2 which wasn't as well received i'm surprised they didn't bundle that together it's so bad it's not even no, it's, okay okay so it is it is a tales game it plays like a tales game it is it just feels like such a shoehorned idea yeah like how to make symphonia good again like they're just so is symphonia pokemon that's basically what it was. Yeah. Um, it was a fun game mechanically, um, but the story was garbage. Yeah. <laughs> but I, 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 still liked it. I still, I still liked it. Which well, just looked I like didn't it, love it had nothing it, to like do with Symphonia. Symphonia. It has nothing to do with Symphonia except like no, it's, some okay, of the characters no, no, there. okay. It, it, the story is when you when Disney writes Snow White two or Aladdin two. <laughs> or the Lion King too. Yeah, it's basically that story. It's like we had this big epic adventure. Now let's just talk about family matters. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's, that's basically what it comes <laughs> off like. So, but it's 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 not a bad game. I liked it, but okay. it is no. It holds no candle to uh, Tales of Symphonia One. It doesn't even hold a candle to Abyss. It doesn't even hold the candle to the one that's already there. Yeah, I was like just watching people play it, and I was like, "This is not good." <laughs> it's it's good, but it's it's nowhere near the ones people like. You have so many other better. With if Symphonia and Abyss released on the Switch already, mm-hmm. there'd be no reason to port Symphonia two on its own because people would already have the three games that are infinitely better, and the reason those games are good, like they could probably port Bosseria or something like that. And it'll probably do a hell of a lot better. Yeah. You know, it's just... But it wasn't a bad game. It's just that when you're when you're coming off the tail end of a masterpiece, basically, mm-hmm. you're not, you're not going to have a good time. Yeah. You're just not going to have a good time. But um, to top that off, um, they... Uh, of course, they, we talked about the Zelda and stuff. Um, they showed off... Their, their new port of uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Oh, yeah, that was a little weird. Yeah. Why? Well, I think Nintendo is... Uh, I think Nintendo does have a couple of what I call B-class teams. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't. I have nothing that can truly confirm that. But I believe they have B-class teams where they just sit there and basically port games or do asset work for other... Like, in between these. And I think... They're the reasons we're getting so many ports onto the Switch because they made a small team that are just like they hire new like trainees and stuff and like all right you you go to work on this you you go to work on that you 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 know no, okay. and they just kind of test their metal with the development of ports while like all the like established people are like all right you get to be on the Splatoon team you get to be on the yeah I can see that happening like. I'm surprised more companies don't have teams like that, to be perfectly honest. Like, yeah. By this point, if Namco comes, comes over and ports the Ghostly Adventures, they'd probably make a... They'd make enough money to, you know, to call a profit off of it. Yeah. Just off of brand alone. But don't ever port Ghostly Adventures. We're going to all pretend that didn't exist. <laughs> But stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. The Munchables from the Wii was really a fun game. I I would like to see that come to the Switch as well. But it's like stuff like that, right? Uh huh. But overall, the uh, direct was uh, 
It was growing on me. It's growing. <laughs> it's farm. It's a joke. You know what? I don't have to explain everything to you. <laughs> well, we were just talking about ghostly adventures. How is that growing? Right. Because it does. <laughs> but no, as as a whole, it, there was a lot of <laughs> there was a lot of okay. farming simulators on it. But I'm excited for the story of Seasons Take of a Wonderful Life. So basically, it's um, it's basically a Harvest Moon 64 just redone. And they even showed the one character, and I was like, I married that chick before. <laughs> <laughs> and then they showed a lot of Harvest Stella. Harvest Stella is actually looking really good. It. They also confirmed they did a Rune Factory 3. They're doing a Rune Factory 3 port. And they announced a Rune Factory game coming up. So it might be Frontiers 2 and it might be 6. Okay. But I do hope they port Frontiers. And if not, I have Harvestella. Because Harvestella seems to be everything I remember of Frontiers with a splash of Square Enix paint. Okay. And belts. <laughs> Thanks, Nomura. <laughs> so, then they announced Octopath Traveler 2. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. And after that, they had, there, there was a little interview that uh, Square is still looking at making more 2D HD games. So, okay. there's to hope for that. I'm hoping for more, like, Final Fantasy ones, though. That'd yeah. That would be cool. Well, I'm sure they do, like, a decent amount, despite, like, they probably have a tiny little team... And then it, they probably just it probably just turns out so much profit. I'm, I'm honestly like ever since Onanaki, I've not seen anything from the Tokyo RPG Factory. I wonder what, what they're doing right now. Some big. No, Tokyo RPG Factory is pretty small. Okay. So they're not they're not they did I am Setsuna, they did Lost Sphere, and they did Onanaki on the Switch. Oh, okay. And gotcha. it's it's on other systems too. So yeah. um I am Setsuna is a very sad RPG. Like, sad as in, like, it's somber and stuff like that. Um, I have not got to play Last Sphere yet, even though I have it sitting here on the shelf. I like Onanaki the most. It's like an action RPG. I like the mechanics in it where you basically summon a spirit that does the attacking for you and such. And, yeah, I, I like the overall, but I want to know what they're doing next, because I kind of have an appreciation of their games. Yeah. So. No, they're, they're, what are they, like, a B-class indie? I don't know. They always I don't know. Though. Like, I think I think Square still own, like, owns a sum of them or something like that, or maybe okay. they're funding them. I don't know. Like, I don't know everything about to Tokyo RPG Factory at all, but... Oh, uh, this stuff is always really really well polished for despite how small they are. For how small they are, it's polished, it, but they it does not... It's, it's nowhere near, like, pixel fatigue-based games. Mm-hmm. And it's nowhere near the cut type of high class you expect from like Square Enix, no, uh, you know, uh, proper. Yeah. So it's actually they're they're really good. They play really well. It's just that some some of the characters and some of the story is either boring. Mm -hmm. Like I am Setsuna, like everything's in the snow. Everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> everything. Everything is in the snow. I do not remember a single level that was like a desert. Oh, okay. Like, it was... There was no biomes other than chili. So, you know, so, there's that. Yeah. So, after my rant, I think... Yeah, I think uh, the Nintendo Direct was doing pretty well. So. Good to hear. Yeah, I know. And this is a <laughs> review, so I could, I could upload this one later and it still matters. Okay. Unlike, unlike <laughs> predictions last time. Kevin. <laughs> so. But, I... We'll say we're going to go ahead and end it there. So thank you guys all for listening. If you like our content, feel free to like and subscribe and share our content wherever possible. And we, we will see, see you on the other side. side.